In today's session, we are going to look at the uh, basics uh, of uh, health communication skills. Now, when we talk about basics of health communication skills, mm -hmm. here we are going to try and discuss the important role that effective communication plays in, in our work or in your work as a, a health practitioner. How effective is communication going to improve how you relate with other workmates at your workplace uh, yeah, apart from with your workmates also <clears throat> with the patients that you are dealing with as well so basically in this particular unit that is what we are going to focus on now as we look at uh, this particular unit we will explain of course uh, the importance of uh, effective communication um, in of course uh, the health setting or nursing Apart from that, we are also going to describe the basic communication skills that are required in nursing care. <clears throat> now, we'll start with the importance of effective communication. When we talk about the importance of effective communication, the first one is that it motivates patients and colleagues to set and reach goals. Now, if you effectively communicate where your colleague is able to understand what you are trying to communicate or what you are trying to say. This is going to motivate the patients themselves and the colleague. Imagine you are in a situation where someone explains something to you and you are not even sure what they explained to you and what you are supposed to do. Now, this literally takes away all the motivation that you may have had to even do that particular work effectively. <clears throat> the other the uh, importance of effective communication is that it creates an environment that promotes treatment and healing. When you effectively communicate, the environment is promoted to give treatment and healing to the patients. Some of us, we may know something, uh, but then we don't communicate to others. Maybe you assess the patient, the patient requires medication, but you keep quiet and assume that the medications will just bring themselves or you assess the patient you realize that the condition is worsening and you don't communicate to other uh, health care givers this will not promote healing in this particular patient hence this is why we are saying that effective communication <clears throat> creates an environment that promotes treatment and healing apart from that the other importance is that it improves the working condition the working condition is improved when we are continuously communicating with other caregivers within our working environment. Imagine you go for work, uh, your workmates don't talk to you, everyone seems to be in their own world, no one is talking to you, everyone just seems to be doing things on their own. This literally uh, takes away uh, the, the, the motivation when you're at work because you feel so isolated. And then apart from that, uh, the other importance is that it reduces conflicts with patients and colleagues. When we're effectively communicating, the conflicts are reduced because your friends will know why you have done what you have done. Rather than every time because they are not sure what you did or what, why you have done what you have done, then they end up now confronting you and this always creates a conflict at the workplace. Effective communication to the patients as well will reduce conflicts with patients. When you tell the patients what you are going to do on them, if you are collecting blood, if you are collecting some samples for investigations, whatever you are doing on them, if you are effectively communicating what is being done on them, this reduces conflicts or misunderstandings between you, the healthcare giver, as well as the patient themselves. <clears throat> Apart from that, the other importance is that it improves or increases self-esteem and self-confidence. With effective communication, your self-esteem and self-confidence is improved because even other health caregivers will effectively communicate to you. And this builds you up in a long run where you now understand and know what is supposed to be done in any particular situation. Apart from that, the other importance is that it reduces stress and improves the working condition. When there is effective communication, stress is reduced because 
if you know that there is something someone else can do on the patient while you do on other things, you effectively communicate to other caregivers and you are going to have that division of work where this one does this work, this one does this work because you are able to see the problems and you're able to communicate to others so that you sort out whatever problems you are, you are seeing as uh, the healthcare team. But if you don't communicate, then you put more stress and pressure on yourself because you need now to complete all the tasks on your own because you are not effectively communicating other importance of course those are some of the importance but then we also have uh, the poor communication what it can do on an individual at the workplace the first thing is that poor communication can result in increased stigmatization stigma Stereotyping of individuals at the workplace can be increased because you are not communicating. It also creates misunderstanding. <clears throat> because you are not effectively communicating, now you find that people now end up quarreling at the workplace. The misunderstanding increases and increases because uh, everyone doesn't know what they are, they are doing because no one is communicating uh, what each person is doing at the workplace. Apart from that, it also affects the patient's motivation to get cured. When you're not uh, communicating, you find that you end up doing the same thing, all of you, at one patient because you're not e communicating and you may not even know what to do because it is not always that you know everything that needs to be done on the patient. Hence, if you're effectively communicating, you, f you realize that uh, even uh, finding solutions or treatment modalities to the patient is improved. But if this is not done, it affects the motivation of the patient to get cured because they'll be very worried. Apart from that, poor communication can lead to a misdiagnosis or prescribing wrong medication. When you're not effectively communicating, you can give the patient a wrong disease that they are not suffering from because you look at the symptoms, the, what the patient has presented with, and in your head you assume, okay, maybe this is malaria. But then you are not even sure. But if you effectively communicate with other health caregivers, you are able to put one, two, three together and, re and now come up with a correct uh, diagnosis or disease that the patient is suffering from. Or even medication. Other caregivers can advise to say, okay, the best drug we can use in this situation is this particular drug. But if you are not communicating, you may end up even giving a long medication. Apart from that, the other uh, <clears throat> factor is, of course, it hinders medical progress and the treatment of patient, and there's also slow recovery time and adherence to treatment when we are not effectively communicating. So, <clears throat> of course, we know about the basics of uh, communication skills uh, in nursing, of course, as we give nursing care. Imagine you have uh, two types of nurses or healthcare givers that you meet at a particular shift. This one looks very happy. This one looks very sad. And both of them, they greet you good morning. I'm sure everyone would prefer to approach this type of a nurse because they look approachable because they have a happy face. And everyone would avoid this particular type of a nurse because they look very sad and unapproachable. Hence, when we talk about communication skills, sometimes even our non-verbal communication plays an important role in how we attend to patients and how patients become very comfortable to speak to us. So when we talk about uh, basics of communication skills, the first thing is that you need to understand your own communication habits. So you need to understand your own communication habits, both the good habits and also the bad habits. Uh, no one has all the good habits of communication. We all have some bad habits, just that maybe we have never realized that we have bad communication habits. So you need to understand your own communication habits. When you understand yourself, you know how to carry yourself in a particular situation and avoid the bad habits. 
Apart from that, you need to pay attention also to non-verbal communication cues. Pay attention. How do you uh, present when you're talking to someone? Do you frown on your face? Or do you make some facial gestures that show, shows like you're not interested in the conversation? So pay attention to these nonverbal cues. It could be you move your hands in a certain manner, which may irritate another individual. So you need to pay attention to nonverbal communication cues. Apart from that, providing constructive uh, feedback. Give feedback so that you know where you need to work on. If this is your colleague, you tell them where they need to work on so that they improve with communication uh, process. Apart from that, you need to ask open-ended questions. So with good communication skills, you need to be able to guide the interaction and make sure that you are able to interact with the patient as much as possible. So to show good communication habits, you need to have open-ended questions. Imagine you come to me, you ask me closed-ended questions like, how are you? I'll just say, I'm fine. Have you eaten? I'll say, no. Why have you eaten? I don't know. So if I start answering like the way I'm answering, it will show like I'm very rude. Hence, to improve good communication habits, you need to give open-ended questions so that this will lead the interactions. If you ask me, why have you not eaten, then instead of asking me answering to say, I don't know, but I answer to say, oh, uh, I wasn't feeling hungry, but uh, I will eat, I think, maybe around uh, 20 hours um, when I, I think by that time I'll be hungry. So like that, this conversation will keep going on and it won't seem um, very rude. Then apart from that, active listening. When you're talking to someone, you need to closely pay attention to them rather than you're talking to someone and you seem to be busy doing other things on the phone or paying attention to other, uh, uh, other things within the environment. This will make the person that you're talking to to feel as though whatever they're explaining to you is of, uh, of no importance. Hence, you need to actively listen. So this is what I've uh, explained. <clears throat> you can just appreciate it through, of course. Okay, so that is about the basics of uh, communication, health communication skills. Till next time, goodbye.